thank you thank you dr anuj maheshwari who is a very dear friend and uh, is uh, we have been working together for many years now so i thank him for the kind words of introduction and i congratulate uh, dr rutul dr uh, and all the other uh, members of the organizing committee uh, for uh, putting up such a excellent show excellent program and uh, i think uh, i i should congratulate them I, as uh, dr anuj mentioned it was both virtual today and also i think it is going to be physical tomorrow so i am sure it's going to benefit many people so uh, i will go on to my talk my talk is on uh, the link between thyroid dysfunction and diabetes so we see you know uh, and and gdm particularly we see a lot of people uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, i mean a lot of women having these two problems because both of them are independently uh, very common endocrine problems that is uh, both gestational diabetes we have been hearing about it and we also know that thyroid disorders are also equally sort of common in pregnancy and uh, have a significant impact on the outcomes of pregnancy and therefore what we want to see is that what is the link between these two are they just um are they just that they are two different independent disorders that are happening simultaneously and uh, coincidentally they are they are they are occurring in the same patient or is there is some link between them so that i'll try to uh, 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 sort of dissect out this uh, this in the next uh, 15 20 minutes or so so if you look at the prevalence of uh, i mean i don't need to do this because uh, this has been discussed uh, a lot of times uh, now that uh, you know uh, diabetes in pregnancy is very common one in six live births are affected because of uh, because of diabetes because of either because of pre gestational diabetes or gestational diabetes and we know that they are they are they are more than 5 million people uh, women with gestational diabetes in india and uh, and 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 the prevalence rates have been variable across different different states some of the states having high prevalence while others may be having a slightly lower prevalence and at the same time if you look at hypothyroidism what we would like to say is that uh, uh, in uh, we have actually uh, looked at hypo uh, the prevalence of hypothyroidism and they we have found that you know from the earlier studies where the prevalence rates were very less as you can see in some of the studies it was about uh, uh, 2 to 3% Uh, hypothyroidism in pregnancy in the US, but in our country we find that uh, you know it's quite higher. This is one study uh, from uh, North India, North India showing 6.47 uh, prevalence. But we did a, a 11 city study across nine states of India, and we found that the prevalence rate is is to the tune of is to the tune of about 13 percent when you're looking at 4.5. Uh, uh cut off t of tsh we found that you know the prevalence was 13% and um, and 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 uh, sh- showing that it is quite si- quite a significant problem anti tpo antibodies were positive in 20% of of the patients so this was a study which we published in 2016 uh, uh, um, and uh, this was published in ijm and uh, i was part of this study and we had uh, other investigators from across the country dr dinesh danwal was coordinating this doctor uh, uh, we had uh, from all the uh, all the nine states we had representation and uh, we found this uh, prevalence of 13% in this study now uh, so what we are saying is that uh, there is a significant uh, sort of uh, change in thyroid function during pregnancy uh, uh, there is because of the fact that uh, there are hormonal changes that happen in pregnancy there is increase in estrogen levels there is increase in the uh, in the peripheral metabolism of thyroid hormones and uh, because of the uh, and and also the other important thing that happens in early pregnancy is that there is increase in hcg levels hcg has a similarity in the structure with tsh and that causes suppression of the tsh values but there is also stimulation of the of the t4 levels and and uh, uh, the, the, there is also in addition to that there is uh, increase in plasma volume and uh, and and uh, so because of this there is there are changes happening because of the increase uh, estrogens there are increase in thyroid binding globulins because of which that is there is increase in the uh, total hormones that is total t3 and total t4 but the free hormones will remain normal and uh, there is a transient decline in tsh in the first trimester because of the because of the increase in hcg levels and similarly there is uh, there is this uh, uh, increased peripheral conversion of t4 to t3 
and uh, uh, so this uh, this happens because of of placental dehydrogenase also that is there so all in all there is increased demand for uh, thyroxine in the pregnancy thyroid metabolism in pregnancy the maternal uh, requirement for thyroid hormones increases and uh, even uh, in the first part of pregnancy in the f first few weeks of pregnancy itself and later on the thyroid fetal thyroid starts functioning from the 10 to 12 weeks and then uh, probably the requirement is not as much as as is there in the first 10 weeks of pregnancy and uh, untreated hypothyroidism if it is not picked up and treated it has several important uh, effects on the maternal uh, on the, on the mother and all the fetus as you can see here and it can increase the risk for antepartum uh, eclamp uh, preeclampsia eclampsia gestational hypertension placental abruption so all these things uh, are 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 the uh, the influence of untreated maternal hypothyroidism and uh, there is also uh, association with fetal problems like growth restriction increased perinatal mor morbidity and mortality impaired neuro uh, psycho intellectual development is another issue which most of us are worried about but it has not been clearly shown, shown to be very significant but there are some minor grades of you know neuro psycho uh, psychological uh, developmental uh, uh, problems in 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 uh, in women uh, in the infants of women who are not treated for hypothyroidism so let's look at the uh, look, look at uh, some of the uh, studies which have looked at a um, uh, looked at the impact of maternal hypothyroidism untreated maternal hypothyroidism there was a trend for adverse outcome but was not very significant in terms of the neuro neuropsych uh, neuropsychiatric development and uh, now le le looking at the link between the two that is uh, thyroid dysfunction and and uh, glucose homeostasis what we see is that uh, uh, the the thyroid uh, hormones regulate the hepatic gluconeogenesis, intestinal absorption of glucose, peripheral uptake of glucose. All these are influenced by the thyroid function. They promote uh, the, the, the thyroid hormones promote glycogenolysis. They modify the circulating insulin levels and counter regulatory hormones and modulate the messenger RNA and protein expression of, of glucose transporters. Therefore, thyroid hormones have a significant impact on the uh, on the uh, on the th uh, on the glucose metabolism also. Now, if you look at the thyroid hormones, they act differentially in the liver, skeletal muscle, and adipose tissue. They oppose the actions of insulin in some of the tissues, while they synergistically act with insulin in the other tissues. So, as you can see here, uh, in in uh, in women who are euthyroid, you can see that there is uh, there is an effect on the uh, the glucose increases the uh, increase increases the sort of while the glucose has a stimulatory effect on the on the on the beta cell production of insulin thyroid hormones also have a of, ha, also have a, 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 a complementary effect on that they also have uh, they also influence the uh, the peripheral insulin resistance through influencing the glut 4 activity so thyroid hormones have a significant influence on the on the glucose metabolism so is the link purely coincidental since we are seeing this uh, relationship in the uh, pathophysiology of these two problems there is probably something more than just being coincidental so some studies have found no no clear association between gdm and thyroid dysfunction uh, while other studies have shown that there is a uh, that hypothyroxinemia or low thyroid hormone levels or hypothyroidism is clearly more common among patients with gdm so this is what some studies have shown and some other studies have shown that hypothyroid patients are at higher risk of gdm also so both these may interact, may correlate, may correlate. I mean, the prevalence of these problems may correlate because uh, because those who are having uh, hypothyroidism, they are, tend to have higher risk of developing GDM also. And thyroid autoimmunity in GDM is it associated? Could it there be a causal a, a causal relationship between between thyroid auto, uh, autoimmunity and the autoimmunity that happens in GDM also? So these are some of the interesting issues which have not been very clearly studied. We don't have very clear information on that, but we have some uh, studies which have looked at that. I'll just show you those studies, and then probably we can uh, we can you know then conclude based on the available evidence. Understand what is the available evidence showing. So if you look at the thyroid autoimmunity in, in gestational diabetes, we see that there is a clear uh, associate, clinical association between chronic autoimmune thyroiditis and type 2 diabetes in relation to the uh, to certain common antigens that are shared by the pancreatic beta cells and the thyroid follicular cells. So these common antigens stimulate uh, can 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 initiate autoimmunity, which can be directed against the other cell type, as we can see. So hyperglycemia at the time of pregnancy or immediately after delivery triggers the autoimmune disorders. 
and uh, it was shown these are all uh, animal data that 10 millimoles millimo increase in glucose levels in cultured thyroid cells can upregulate the major histocompatibility complex class 1 expression this phenomena causes the thyrocyte to become an antigen presenting cell and possibly to overcome the cell tolerance and therefore there is thyroid autoimmunity initiated just because there is severe hyperlysemia it can initiate thyroid autoimmunity so this mechanistically this can happen this is what has been shown in in vitro models and uh, so we can see this interesting study uh, which was looking at uh, gestational diabetes and thyroid, thyroid autoimmunity this was uh, this was an italian study where what they did was uh, they looked at uh, four groups of individuals 91 uh, subjects in group 1 they were gdm pregnant women non gdm pregnant women in, uh, in the second group group b1 had uh, post gdm women and uh, group b2 had healthy mothers they studied thyroid autoimmunity by measuring the thyroid uh, 3PO antibodies, the TG antibodies, the TSH receptor antibody positivity and thyroid dysfunction. They looked at thyroid dysfunction uh, whether it was uh, TSH was less than 0.4 or more than 4.2 or the combination of these. And what they found was that uh, there was no difference for both thyroid function and prevalence of autoimmune disorders during pregnancy. A significant increase in thyroid aut autoimmunity was seen in women previously affected by gestational diabetes. So as you can see, those who had gestational diabetes, as as we discussed in the previous slides, there was an increase in uh, thyroid autoimmunity, and the increased prevalence of thyroid autoimmunity was not associated with the development of impaired glucose metabolism after pregnancy. So probably it has uh, whether the GDM itself had an impact or was it was it uh, a inherent abnormality in these women was not clearly made out in this study. So the other studies who have looked at uh, they, 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 they were a meta there was a meta-analysis of 20 studies of which 10 were cohort studies, 10 were co case control studies and they looked at the association between thyroid uh, antibodies and gestational diabetes and you can see as you can see uh, the, the, there was no clear message coming out of it because some studies showing uh, a, a negative association, some studies are showing a positive association and finally if you look at look at the uh, look at the uh, this thing uh, the final summary out of this the what we find is that overall if you see the re result there was a 12 percent increase you can say in the prevalence of uh, thyroid antibodies amongst women with gdm and if you look at thyroid antibodies and risk of gestational diabetes in youth thyroid pregnancy uh, so what we can see is that again uh, you can see that there is a a, a slightly increased risk of of uh, uh, of uh, gestational diabetes mellitus in in youth thyroid pregnancies now let us look at the effect of hypothyroidism or the hypothyroxemia on the on the on the risks of gdm so in this study this was again an interesting study which looked at the frequency of isolated maternal hypothyroxemia with gestational diabetes in a moderate moderately iron deficient area so this was not a totally iron and sufficient iodine sufficient population there was the iodine deficient area 50 gdm participants and 60 non gdm participants from the control group and dpo antibody positivity was 30 percent in the in the in the those with gdm while 15 percent in the control group non gdm so showing that uh, there, there is increased tpo antibody positivity amongst the gdm patients as compared to non gdm and uh, so the, clearly showing that uh, that there is some association and uh, uh, among the women with GDM, isolated maternal hypothyroxinemia found in 8 and 14 percent in second, second and third trimesters. There is no significant difference between the case and control groups in terms of first trimester TSH and FT4 levels. So, although there was autoimmunity, it did not significantly impact the occurrence of uh, of hypothyroidism. As you can say, the thyroid function was uh, more or less equal between these groups. Uh, however, there was a slightly lower T4 levels in the first and second trimesters as you can see in that study so higher isolated mental hypothyroxemia which means that there is a low free t4 level but the tsh is not significantly uh, affected t3 levels are normal the this was uh, this could be due to the effect of both pregnancy and glucose metabolism on thyroid function because we know that in pregnancy also normal pregnancy also there is a slight decrease in uh, free t4 levels because of the increased demand uh, and the total T4 levels are high, so that clearly is not made uh, made out in that study because that's, those studies were also uh, having smaller number of participants. Now, another interesting study looked at uh, the low thyroid hormone in early pregnancy. Is it associated with increased risk of gestational diabetes? So this is an interesting study. So what they looked at was that those who had got thyroid hormone deficiency 
and they looked at their uh, development of GDM because the deficiency in thyroid uh, hormone comes up early in pregnancy. GDM comes little later in pregnancy. It comes in the second trimester. So they have looked at uh, those who are having non-GDM versus the. Uh, I mean, they looked at the thyroid uh, dysfunction, and they found the levels of free T4 in early pregnancy in GDM woman was lower than in non-GDM woman. That is, if they are, if if a woman has lower thyroid hormone levels, FT4 levels in early pregnancy, then she has got a li higher likelihood of having GDM later on in pregnancy. So that was what was the conclusion from this study, which had a reasonably good number of patients. As you can see, they were almost about uh, 23,000 non-GDM versus and 3,000 GDM. So almost about 26,000 uh, individuals were studied. This was a Chinese uh, study, which looked at almost 26,000 women and uh, they found that those who had lower thyrox uh, ft4 levels in the first trimester they were they had a higher tendency to develop gdm in later in later in pregnancy and uh, another study which is again a chinese study looked at uh, thyroid dysfunction and autoantibodies in early pregnancy and uh, and looked at its association with increased risk of gdm and adverse birth outcomes so out of uh, 1170 patients who were studied uh, participated in this study maternal serum samples in the first trimester were tested for all that and subsequently they looked at the occurrence of gdm and what they found i mean the, although this is a busy slide what i will say is that there was a fourfold increase in risk of gestational diabetes in women with high tsh levels and thyroid autoimmunity in early pregnancy showing that if you have a, a, a thyroid dysfunction in early pregnancy the risk of gdm is higher and uh, this was a meta-analysis looking at uh, the relationship, same relationship between hypothyroidism and the incidence of gestational diabetes. So they had uh, several studies in this meta-analysis and uh, what we find is that there is a, overall, there is a almost 80% increase as you can see 1.89 is odds ratio for development of GDM in, in women who have got hypothyroidism. So clearly showing that, uh, that it, is, it is important that is this is over thyroid dysfunction with subclinical thyroid dysfunction the risk is about 1.58 uh, odd ratio is 1.56 showing that almost a 56 percent increase in risk of developing uh, gestational diabetes so clearly these studies have shown that there is an increased risk of uh, of developing gestational diabetes in those who have early onset of thyroid dysfunction in in early pregnancy so it's important the message that comes out is that in uh, although universally we are screening all women but we should be a little more careful in, in those in those women who have thyroid autoimmunity or thyroid dysfunction early in pregnancy. We should look at uh, look at doing that. I mean, we should not miss miss out doing uh, checking them for DGDM and appropriately managing them. Thyroid function early pregnancy is an indicator of subsequent risk of GDM. If uh, uh, the the free T3 and free T4 level ratio in early in pregnancy is an independent risk factor for GDM. And uh, increased levels of either marker, uh, either marker makes a, a makes the risk of GDM greater. The FT3, FT4 ratio most strongly is most strongly associated with GDM. Women with isolated hypothyroxemia in second trimester had an almost threefold greater risk of GDM. So what we are seeing is that uh, with overt hypothyroidism, these risks are there. With, even with subclinical hypothyroidism. The incidence of gestational diabetes is higher. This is another study which showing the same thing, but the maternal TSH level and TPO antibody status in pregnancy and their relationship to the gestational diabetes. Clearly, we saw that over 7,084 7, pregnant women, out of which 1,141 developed GDM between 24 to 28 weeks. When they see, when they compared them, uh, and they looked for the thyroid function status, and they looked at uh, that. They said that women with overt hypothyroidism were at a significantly greater risk of gestational diabetes when compared with euthyroid women. Women with subclinical hypothyroidism also had a significantly higher risk of developing gestational diabetes when compared to euthyroid women. So hypothyroidism appears to negatively affect glucose homeostasis by inducing insulin resistance. And pregnant women with hypothyroidism have further amplified insulin resistance and thus they have increased risk of gestational diabetes. Now, having looked at that, so clearly the message that we have got from all these studies, although some of them were small studies, but a meta-analysis of these studies has clearly shown that. Now, let us just quickly, in a minute or so, look about hyperthyroidism and gestational diabetes. So, hyperthyroidism has also effects on glucose metabolism and it increases the hepatic glucose production, changes the insulin metabolism, increases the response to beta hydrogenic stimulation and increase plasma-free fatty acid levels. And what we can see is that uh, 
there is a clear relationship between the uh, subclinical thyroid disease even uh, hyperthyroidism subclinical hyperthyroidism also leads to increased risk of gdm as you can see that uh, subclinical hyperthyroidism the odds ratio for for gdm as you can see hyperthyroidism subclinical hypothyroidism is increasing the risk but uh, hyperthyroidism subclinical hyperthyroidism is incre decreasing the risk the incis incidence of gestational diabetes increases from subclinical hyperthyroidism to u thyroid to subclinical hypothyroidism so clearly what we are saying is that the hyperthyroid ones subclinical hyperthyroid ones have a lower risk of gdm as compared to those with subclinical hypothyroidism which tend to have a increased risk so we are seeing that there is a a, a connection between between gdm and uh, hyperthyroidism also and hypothyroidism which we have already discussed studies are showing conflicting results on the risk of gestational diabetes with hyperthyroidism few studies have found no association but some have shown a negative association and some have also shown a positive association so this is something which was not very clearly uh, although one of the studies which have showed we showed this clear association other studies have been having conflicting results so we will not you know keep that as a as an important uh, factor but subclinical hypothyroidism and overt hypothyroidism clearly have an increased risk of gestational diabetes now uh, with gestational diabetes there is a higher risk of postpartum thyroiditis also that is another uh, link between the two so with with this i'll summarize because we are running out of uh, uh, behind schedule so i'll i'll uh, restrict my uh, time and summarize by saying that conflicting results among various studies uh, maybe due to patient selection methods inter essay variability and different number of participants in each study there is need to carry out a universal screening for thyroid dysfunction among pregnant women in the first trimester and this is uh, the, 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 this is something which we have been recommending in our country that uh, we should do this and similarly we are also recommending that all women should be screened for gestational diabetes so finally i would summarize by saying that thyroid dysfunction is common in gestational diabetes both subclinical and overt hypothyroidism associated with higher risk of gestational diabetes in the presence of thyroid autoimmunity and thyroid dysfunction during pregnancy women should be followed carefully in subsequent pregnancies for development of gestational diabetes mellitus thyroid uh, though hyperthyroidism increases glucose intolerance studies are inconsistent over its association with gdm gdm may increase the risk of postpartum thyroiditis also so these are the important associations that you should keep in mind so with that i'll conclude and i'll stop sharing my screen i'll be happy to answer any questions if there